Welcome everyone. Uh, this is our Cypress plus Netlify webinar, build, deploy, and test. I'm Gleb Bakhmutov. I now have a title of Distinguished Engineer at Cypress. And with me is a special guest, Jason Langstorff. Jason is from Netlify, and he is the principal developer for experience engineer. Ooh, it's a mouthful. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Jason, what do you do at Netlify, right? Let's, let's be real. <laughs> uh, so I work at... Um at the kind of the, the intersection of the developer community, the, the product, our marketing and our sales. So we, we kind of look at where the community is going, where the product is going, and we try to connect those dots so that we can make sure that, that Netlify is responsive to the community needs and that the community is aware of, of the things that we're doing to try to be responsive to the community needs. So we're kind of the conduit in between. So most of my work is, is demos, education, uh, show and tell, and then bringing feedback back into the company from from what we learned there. That's very nice. And you do a lot of show tells and you do a lot of learnings, right? So you have your own, you know, Twitch standards, right? <laughs> uh, learn with Jason.dev. That's what people should go to, you know, check yeah, it out. Yeah, learn with Jason.dev is uh, is my my show. Um, we do 90 minutes of pair programming a couple times a week. And that is uh, all up on the site. I'll see if I can, let me just drop this out there for y'all. That is a link if you want to go check it out. Uh, Gleb has been on the show. We did a we did yeah. an episode where we pair programmed on um, doing actually something fairly similar to what we're going to do today. So I'm uh, I'm pretty excited. If you, if you see today and you get excited, you can go see us do it live. Exactly. It's a very good uh, observation. Go to Learn with Jason, find that Twitch you know, recording and you will get a sense of what it means to write a Cypress test. Mm -hmm. uh, you can find Jason on Twitter, you can find me on Twitter and on my personal site. So this webinar will cover a lot of things, but at the end we'll have questions and answers. And if you wanna ask a question and get an answer, either live or later, just go to Slido. You can go to slido.com or sly.do and enter the event code. And our event code, not surprisingly, is SciNetlify. And in the middle of this webinar, we'll have a little poll of people. So it will be interactive. And hi, Philip. <laughs> Philip is a, a Cypress ambassador from Slide and he's watching. Okay, Jason, are you ready to roll? I'm ready. Excellent. And we're gonna cover a bunch of things, right? We're gonna show a website. We're gonna deploy it to Netlify. We will test it, test it again. And I'll explain how to write a Netlify build plugin if you want to write one. And then we'll get to questions and answers. So I want to get rich. Jason, do you want to get rich? Um, yeah, of course. I, I mean, every time I look at Jeff Bezos' net worth, I was like, I should open an e-commerce store. That's so simple. And so you know what I've done? I grabbed an e-commerce store and I didn't even write it. It's actually Sarah Drasner from Netlify who has written one, right? And it's nice smooth very polished website it has items you can pick items pick your size put item in a card and you can there's a stripe checkout so you can enter your credit card and you won't receive anything because it's not a real site but it's almost there and you know I, I wrote it locally and i have to write a test right otherwise like i'll never know if it actually works or not right you know technology is uh, complicated mm -hmm. but this is a test that i've written it goes through everything that a typical user would do. Picking an item, putting in a card, maybe changing the size, going to the card, entering credit card information, and then checking out. So just one test. It's kind of long, but it's, it's not too complicated. If you've never seen what a Cypress test looks like, oh, someone oh, said... I think you're showing your, your presenter um, notes. Okay, that's not right. Let me stop <laughs> sharing for a second and share my other screen. I apologize, thanks for letting me know. How about now, Jason? Beautiful. Looks okay, beautiful. this makes more sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and, you know, we actually joined this uh, Zoom call half an hour later, I mean, uh, early before, right? Just to get through these technical problems and look at us. But th this is typical <laughs> Cypress tests. For example, 
we want to go to men section, right? Then we want to set the maximum price we're willing to pay for an item to $30, pick an item, pick the first one. And when we click on that item, it goes to the product. So we can order size and order the number of items. I, I, I like this jacket, Jason. I think this jacket is, is it. That's like, the one. And it's so stylish. You know how you know it's a stylish jacket? Because the description is in Latin. So it's mm. European, you know, it's old school. Absolutely. And once you click on add to cart, you go to the cart, you see that there are two jackets because I'll, you know, I'll gift one, obviously. And after that, I have to enter my credit card information. And a lot <laughs> of people ask, how do you do that, right? They have a Stripe widget, it's inside an iframe. So a lot of people struggle with that. So here's an example that you can check out in our repo, how I enter credit card information into the Stripe iframe. I'm using a little helper that finds the iframe inside, finds the, you know, the body of iframe, mm -hmm. returns it, and then I can use it like a Cypress uh, element. And I can find the credit card field and type number, month, year. So it looks like this. And I can see again from the Cypress test run, but it's entering it correctly. And once I click pay, the card says, you know, Everything is good. The message goes away, right? It says success. And after that, it says your card is empty, right? Because I want people to buy more. And right about now, you ask yourself, is this enough to get rich, right? And I'm, I'm now, I'm, I'm saying no, Jason. You know, you know my problem <laughs> is? It's running at local host 3000. That's true. So at this point, you're just buying your jacket from yourself. And that seems like it's probably not going to put any extra money in your pocket. No, it's just money from one pocket goes to another pocket. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I have to deploy it somewhere. So for I, I'm picking Netlify. And Jason, can you tell us why would you pick Netlify to deploy the site? Absolutely. So uh, Netlify, I, and I'm looking at the 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 poll here, and it looks like about a quarter of folks here uh, haven't used Netlify or haven't even heard of it. So I'll give the 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 kind of broad view. But what Netlify is is a deployment and CI CD platform. And the idea is that if you set up your site to use a, uh, a decoupled compiled UI architecture, Netlify can handle all of the deployment work so that you're able to very quickly push something to GitHub, GitHub or, and we will pick up that GitHub commit. We will run a build, run any plugins that you want to run, which we'll learn more about in a second. And then we'll take that site live immediately. And this is really, really good whether you are an individual trying to get a site up quickly, uh, whether you're an e-commerce site like Gleb's got going here that you want to be able to, to get up and host, uh, you know, like what we're going to build today is going to run on the free plan. And so you can get up and actually start making some money on the free plan, uh, which, you know, that's that I think is a unique strength of Netlify because a lot of plans, they have a free plan, but you can't use it for commercial. So we can, uh, we can, you know, you can run commercial things on, on Netlify and still be on our free plan. And we're totally into that. Um, and then once it goes live, you can really quickly set up deploy previews so that you can test different branches. We have support for AB testing. We have support for identity and authorization. We have support for forms, uh, serverless functions, and a handful of other things that you can, you can do that make this really friendly and give you a lot of power without a lot of complexity. And I think as we, as, as Gleb starts stepping through here, we'll see kind of how that works. And I'm not even showing everything in my example. Like you mentioned serverless functions. Like mm -hmm. this site actually uses serverless function to keep like the sensitive information, like your connection to Stripe private, right? So instead of directly going to Stripe from client side, whenever someone buys it, goes to the backend, runs serverless function, and that makes a request. Um, Netlify also does API redirects like mm -hmm. through configuration, which is very useful. And our static site at cypress.io is actually the Netlify site, right? So Netlify builds it and hosts it. Uh, yeah. Jason, wh what do you say from this poll? We had a lot of responses. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy to see that uh, a lot of folks are, are using it frequently or using it for a few apps. Um, I think one of the things that I've noticed about Netlify is that a lot of people think that it's only for small sites. Um, right. But the, the great thing is, is, you know, as you just said, 
Cypress runs its site on Netlify. Um, the Kubernetes site is run on Netlify. The Peloton app is actually built on Netlify. Um, the like the Popeyes chicken site when they went viral for their their Popeyes chicken sandwich, uh, their site was on Netlify. They didn't even have to look at their their traffic; it just stayed up because of the way that Netlify is is configured. Um, and we've seen you know the the COVID nineteen tracking info when uh, when we had a little trouble in the U.S. getting COVID data. Uh, Aaron Kassane and a, a group of volunteers put up COVID-19 tracking, and that API went from zero to 2 million API requests overnight, which they were running through Netlify and Netlify serverless functions. Mm -hmm. And they didn't even notice that they'd gotten the traffic until they looked at their wow. analytics. So it's it's definitely built for scale, and it's built to to take a lot of the release management, um, a lot of the, the, the ops and QA stress that goes into a lot of large teams. Mm -hmm. We're working to make that all, all that complexity disappears because we're we're reducing the amount of steps, we're removing removing the amount of moving parts, so that you as a team can really focus on building the website, not managing how the website gets deployed. Gotcha, gotcha. And I heard recently that you you host like a million sites now, right? Like some well, huge we have, number. We have a million developers. Gotcha. Uh, the number of sites is a lot. We we actually don't know. Um, because not every site says, you know, the, yeah. and a lot of sites are are tests or um, people are kind of doing learning projects. So the number of sites is is squishy, but mm -hmm. it's a whole lot of, of requests. <laughs> well, uh, from this poll, I will tell you what about half people are using Netlify, you know, and half mm -hmm. uh, never heard or used it once or twice. So hopefully, maybe um, everyone will benefit from this presentation. So uh, you mentioned Peloton website. Yeah, you know one fun thing about Peloton? Mm. You cannot outrun a Peloton bike. No. <laughs> okay, okay, Let, let's continue. So we're gonna deploy our e-commerce side to Netlify. So what this means is that from Netlify side, you pretty much just pick your GitHub repo and it finds all the settings, it finds the framework I'm using, everything automatically. So this is how fast you can do it. You say, I wanna run it, I want to deploy it. Boom. It's it's that simple. It's a push of a button. Maybe two pushes of a button. So it, it's pretty incredible. I really like this experience. Yeah, this is this is one of my favorite things about it. Um, we've got a CLI for it too. So one of the workflows that I use pretty frequently, especially on the show, is um, I'll stand up a site and deploy it from my command line in a couple mm -hmm. commands yeah. so that I don't even have to go to a UI or or even look at anything. I use the GitHub CLI and the Netlify mm -hmm. CLI, and I get everything up and published and in production in mm -hmm. about thirty seconds. It's a it's such a nice workflow. So in my workflow, so I've done it through Netlify website, and then I just have to change the app name so it hosted at Netlify.app by default. So I change it to something to, to match my repo name, which is kind of like my rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. So once we have that, that's our production side. But now let's talk about developing new features. So you know how you add a new feature and you want to show it to other people on the team, get a you know, buy-in before you deploy it. How do you test it before merging to production? And for that, Netlify has a function, I believe, right? It deploy previews, which is um, anytime you open a pull request or any branch that you specify that you want to build, will automatically create a separate version of that site so that you are able to review it at a unique URL before you make any changes. And this is one of the, the benefits of um, the way that Netlify builds is every build is atomic. And that yeah. means that you have a, a point in time for every single build, they're uniquely addressable. And that means that when you deploy, you not only get a really quick deployment where you have a unique address, it goes live very fast, but if something goes wrong, you just click one button to undo that deploy. Um, right. But deploy previews are super powerful in this way because, you know, as we're about to see, um, we can try something and immediately check it out. So uh, I'm opening a pull request, right? I definitely have a good, error, like a pull request message to be tested. And then I immediately see Netlify app on GitHub comments on the pull request and then like, in seconds, pretty much, all right? Mm -hmm. In less than a minute, it says deployed. Here's a URL, open it. I open it and there's a URL, right? Like right there, deploy preview with the name of a branch. 
right? And the name of the app and it's unique. It doesn't replace your production URL. Like I can still see like the new feature. And the only question there is I need to test it, mm -hmm. right? So because I don't want to deploy a broken site and we can test it even from command line. So what I was doing before I was testing site locally. Well, now I can just say npx Cypress run and then set the base URL to point at that URL that's deployed in production, right? Has full functionality with all the API redirects, serverless functions, everything. And I can test it. And, and that's all, you know, good, but like, I, I don't want to do it from my, you know, command line. I'm, it's, it's not. Yeah, let's automate it, right? Exactly. So we need to run those tests on Netlify, right? So here's kind of what Netlify build system provides. It says, okay, there'll be steps during that build and deploy process. It's not just like NPM run, build and deploy. And in the build system, there are plugins and there are, you know, there is a plugin that I have written uh, for Cypress. And what happens is that there are steps. There is the start of a build, the build itself and deploy. And in between, your plugin can actually do something. So you can do something before you build, after you build, or on successful deployment. There is also like on failed deployment, but I never have deployed like failed deploys, right? Like, but <laughs> never happens to me. <laughs> <laughs> there are no mistakes. <laughs> and the cool thing here is that we can run end-to-end -end tests. And at those steps, your site is still local. It runs at local host, right. for example. After deploy, you get a full URL, the preview URL or production URL, and you can run end-to-end -end test against the fully deployed system. And our plugin right now runs end-to-end -end tests against the deploy site by default. It used to be the, you know, the opposite, but now we're like, okay, you want to have full deploy? Now test it. But you can still opt in into the running test before you build, after you build, but before deploy. So let's see how it looks. So Jason, you like deploying site from command line. I've shown how to do it through web UI. In web UI, you know, all the settings are kept in the GUI, right? In a web application, mm -hmm. like what's the command to build, what folder to deploy, which is not the best way long-term, right? Mm -hmm. You wanna store those settings in some kind of file. Right. So Netlify has Netlify Toml. Okay, why not YAML? Jason, you have to like, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Allow me to apologize on behalf of Netlify for uh, for shipping Toml. No, I, um, Toml was helpful because of the um, the initial simplicity. Yeah. And we tried to ship YAML. It confused everybody more. And we didn't uh -huh. want to break all of our old sites. So we're sticking with Toml. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. I actually used Toml and YAML. And I was like, OK, now you're going back to Toml full time. But, but this yeah. is kind of yeah. what my e-commerce Toml would look like. It's not complicated, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's yeah. fine. It's command and what folder to publish. So this is better than just GUI, right? Because you're now explicitly saying the commands and you keep it in source control. So you can roll back, see what, you know, communicate and so on. So here's how you want to run the test on Netlify. You add a dev NPM module, yeah, right? Netlify plugin Cypress. And then in your Netlify Toml, you add a new section, right? That says plugins. And you just say package Netlify and that's like NPM package name, that's it. That's all you have to do. And now the build system will load that plugin during the build. And now if you push that in your you know, preview, in your branch, you will see a message from that plugin that says one test pass. And if you scroll to the output of Netlify build system, you will see all the extra messages. Like it installs Cypress, it caches it. Mm -hmm. And then it runs the test and you can see it's testing the deployed URL, like the same URL that you will see, it's actually running test against it. So instead mm -hmm. of me doing it locally, the build system and, and the test pass, everything is good. So I know the deployed is working. And I think the thing that's really exciting about this, right, is that, you know, the, the part that I've always loved the most about Cypress is that I'm not testing whether or not somebody changed a div to a paragraph or a span to an H2. Yeah. I'm testing whether or not the website does what the website is supposed to do. It's, right. it's behavioral tests and not implementation tests. And the the ability to to put this right into the automation now for, for the deploy previews is 
so, so powerful. Like I, I love the work that y'all are doing here. And I think it's so cool that, uh, that this is now just kind of something you can turn on with one yes. click. Yes. And now what we've tested, everything is good, right? But well, be before we start talking about problems in real world, I want to show that the plugin also can take inputs, right? You can mm -hmm. configure the plugin. For example, if you want to record to Cypress dashboard, you can say plugins input and record true, and you can pass a bunch of flags, right? And they just go straight to Cypress and Cypress does something in response. Uh, if you, you, if you want to live dangerously, right, and disable tests, you just say enable false. <laughs> I mean, who needs tests, right? <laughs> um, but let's see how this actually helps us. So here's a more realistic, you know, pull request. I'm saying I don't need the link to cart. My users somehow will get to the cart themselves, right? And now I'm like saying, well, I, I did write the test, so I'm safe, or am I? Mm -hmm. And here's what happens. I push the change, I, I broke the cart link, and yet I see all Netlify status checks passed, right? There are no red flags, it's all green. And, and here's you know, my question to myself, like what happened? And I will look at the Netlify messages and it says plugin failed. But see, the interesting thing is that the deploy went through, right? And, and this is something to watch out for, right? The pull request will have no red flags and the deploy went through. And this is because this test runs after successful deployment. So from Netlify's point of view, everything is good, right? It's kind of like I deliver it to you. After that, it's your problem. So call me old fashioned, but I believe that if test fail, then PR should have a red flag, right? Uh, so here's how we're going to do this. Let's uh, kind of look at status checks. So when there is a commit to GitHub, Netlify picks it up automatically, right? Triggers the build, deploys the site. After the site is deployed, the status check is set by Netlify on GitHub. That's what the green thing you see, like, and deploy preview URL. But then it starts running the tests. And so it records things to Cypress dashboard. And then the Cypress dashboard will set the GitHub status check, okay? And the Cypress dashboard can set the status check on GitHub, on Bitbucket, on GitLab, whatever thing you're using. It can post messages to a Slack, like all those things that the tests know, the GitHub uh, Cypress dashboard can do for you. And for this, we have to set up recording. So we want to send all the test results to Cypress dashboard. So from your Cypress test runner, just say, oh, you know, runs, set up a project, peer organization, it will show you a record key, which you should keep private. That's why I blank it out. And then you go to Netlify dashboard, right? Not, not Netlify Tomo because this is a sensitive variable, but instead you set it as a build environment variable there, a Cypress record key. But you set record to true in your Netlify Tomo file. And then you will see a dashboard, Cypress dashboard displays that run. It will have Netlify information. Right, the build, the pull request number, everything already there. And then you want to notify GitHub. So you pick in Cypress, GitHub integration app. You say, I want to comment on every pull request for this repo. And then you will see one more status check, right? So all the Netlify statuses are there and Cypress status, right? That tells, hey, the test has failed. Now. You know, Netlify has a free plan. You can use it and then you'll grow. And if you're successful, you can start on a paying plan. The same thing with Cypress dashboard. We have a free account, right? With a bunch of features. Then we, you know, if you're successfully testing your site, then you can upgrade to paid account. We recently revamped pricing to make it more attractive. But, but we still have a problem, right, Jason? We deployed something we found out it was broken, so we can roll it back, but still like, I don't want to deploy a broken site. Mm -hmm. So what we have to do is run tests before we deploy. So by default, right. we run it after deploy, which is great. It's, we can see the URL ourselves and so on. But remember how I said there are a couple of steps in the build process. We ran tests on success, but we can also run tests in other steps. 
So here's how you do it. You can still run all the tests you know, by default after deploy, but you can also enable pre-build testing, right? Again, you say plugins, inputs, pre-build, and then you can say enable true. But now the site is running locally, right? And now you have to tell Cypress, how do I start the site? Well, in this case, it's not start. Should I wait for your URL to respond locally because it can take a few seconds to build? You know, imagine you're running locally from command line. So what do you do? And so this plugin actually understands all of that. And so what will happen now, if the plugin fails, if it says broken test, then the build process on Netlify says I'm failed, right? And now the, plug, the, plug, the deploy will not start. And you will see Netlify, you know, having a red status check and so on. And, you know, you will see Cypress, you know, status check as well. You know, you can see the video of your test run, you know, recorded to Cypress dashboard. Again, gotta, you see localhost. I got to jump in to say this is easily my favorite thing I've ever seen in testing is <laughs> the fact that I get to watch a video of the test failing because like I, I get tests. Yeah. Right? Like I understand how tests work, but it's really hard to visualize when I'm running it locally and it does the thing that I expect. And yeah. then I run a test and that same test fails. I have no, it's really hard for me to get the mental framework around of like, why did, why is it different between the two things? Right. Being able to open up this video and just see it fail right. and go, Oh, that's what went wrong. Like it makes me so much faster. It's uh, it's really like a game changing move to to add this in. It's it, this was like the part where the top of my head blew off when I learned about Cypress was when I saw this happen. I appreciate the kind words. I also enjoy watching videos again and again of my failures. <laughs> <laughs> I, I okay. All joking aside, right? I, I agree. There is a video, right, of a whole test run where a screenshots and failure. And one thing is that by just saying record true, you're recording all this on Cypress dashboard. Mm -hmm. You don't have to think about how do I store artifacts on Netlify build? How do I maybe upload them somewhere to some S3 bucket? How download them from S3 bucket, right? It's already taken care of, right? Uh, so here we can see why the test failed, that it could not actually go to the cart and so on. So we can fix our feature pull request. Now, um, there is one thing that you mentioned, right? There's Netlify CLI, right? When we ran, for example, Nuxt start, we started the front end, but mm -hmm. if we're using Netlify serverless functions, well, they're not running. So Netlify CLI kind of takes care, right? Like mm -hmm. what does Netlify CLI do when you do Netlify dev? So what Netlify dev will do is it will, it will run your start command. So in this case, it would run Nux dev, but it also starts up a proxy server for Netlify functions so that they will work locally the same way, the same way that they work uh, when deployed. And, and the way that that works is anything that you put in your functions directory, which you can define, will automatically pick up a, a folder called slash Netlify slash functions. If you put anything in there, we'll automatically deploy it. Or you can define any folder you want through the function setting in your build. Um, but what, what that means then is anything that goes live will be available at your website's URL slash dot Netlify slash functions and then the function name. Yeah. When you run Netlify dev, we start that proxy server. And that means that you can then hit localhost whatever port slash dot Netlify slash functions and the, and the function name. So it means you can test locally with serverless functions in a way that, you know, I, it's it, previous to using Netlify, I had been a little hesitant to use serverless functions because they were challenging to yeah. test in orchestration with everything else. Uh, once I learned that I could run that local server and get my serverless functions and my front end all working together without having to configure things, I was like, okay, now I'm going to use serverless functions for everything. <laughs> now I get why people love this. <laughs> it's absolutely true. But Netlify dev starts fully functioning local preview deploy, and it just works. And that's why if you want to test it, you, you should start Netlify dev and then wait for local host, whatever, and then run the test. And it's the closest to the production environment as you can get locally. Mm -hmm. Another thing that I suggest is 
to run different sets of tests pre-deploy and after deploy, right? Because you pre-deploy, you might, for example, test how what happens when I drop the database. Okay. You don't want to do that in production after you deploy. So in this case, we're going to run all the tests pre-built, but when we run our typical tests, right, we're going to specify spec and we'll say, you know, integration slash smoke. So if we have spec files there, Cypress will run against production URL or preview URL only both tests. So they're not destructive and still validate things so work. So in, in my case, I believe I just test that I can go from like men's you know, department to women's department to all to cart and every page loads, mm -hmm. kind of like sanity test, but I don't buy anything. And we had two different you know, sets of tests running all test or smoke test, but Cypress still records it as a single logical dashboard run. Ooh, this is just cool. different groups. I didn't right? realize you were grouping them. Yeah, yeah. So they automatically, if you don't specify the group parameter, they automatically get the stage name as mm -hmm. pre build or on success. And you can see pre build, we run both you know, specs. On success, we only run the smoke spec. Okay, I, we covered pretty much how we deploy how we test after deploy and before deploy. And I just want to finish with a short section on actually writing your own Netlify build plugin. And then we'll go to questions and answers. Why would you want to run, write your own Netlify build plugin? I mean, you have nothing else to do, right? Like <laughs> <laughs> what else do you need? But Jason, why would people write that if you don't mind? Giving so answer? what a build plugin lets us do is it lets us run any logic that we want at different stages in the in the Netlify build. And so if we if we break down what the Cypress plugin is doing, aside from like there's a lot of complex stuff with setting up Cypress and making sure that things are pointed in the right place. Yeah. But what it means from a practical standpoint is that either before the build or after the build is deployed, we're running a Cypress command. Right. And and that lets us kind of say, hey, Netlify, I want to do this thing in addition to running my build command at a certain point in the build. And so we can do things like, maybe I want to run a command that will replace all of my local images uh, with a version that's been uploaded to an asset hosting network like Cloudinary to save yes. bandwidth. Or maybe I want to do a brand compliance check where I'm gonna go make sure that we didn't accidentally misspell the name of our company in right. any of our deployed content. Um, you can do things ranging from security or performance things, like we can run a lighthouse test right. and, and make sure that our site didn't get slower with the most recent deploy. And yeah. again, we can fail on that. If our if the delta between the last deploy and the current deploy is big enough, you can say, hey, that's too slow. We need to figure out what happened. Right. Um, so these build plugins effectively let us say what's important to us in our deploy pipeline. Yeah. And without having to write the whole bash script, you can say, I want to run this CLI command, or I want to do this node, ex like it's it's a node script, right? So yeah. you're basically writing a callback function in node. And that can do anything. You can use the file system. We'll give you access to environment variables that you can use to figure out, is this a deploy preview or is this the production site? And then you can do different logic based on that. There's a huge amount of control that you get that's all opt-in, right? Like Netlify right. will do almost everything you need by default. There are a lot of build plugins that do stuff for you. But if you have a special use case, if you want to bring in something from your, your custom network or you've got a, a, an in-house service that you want to use to, to run something, we'll give you the build hooks and you can just drop in there. Like, I want to do this little bit of logic and then I want to run this command. And then if something goes wrong, I can fail the build and, and send a message and that'll go back to GitHub and show up on the PR. So All it right. gives you a lot of control over what, what happens and why in your build that lets you customize it for your team's needs. So I personally kind of experienced it from writing two plugins. So I wrote Netlify plugin Cypress and also Netlify plugin GitHub dispatch, but dispatch is a workflow on GitHub after deploy. But I also looked at the catalog. So Netlify has a bunch of plugins already catalog where I can, you can look at the source code. I mean, it's just JavaScript. Mm -hmm. Like this is the powerful thing. You write JavaScript to extend the build system mm -hmm. and that's what's completely blows away, you know, YAML uh, configuration for CIs and writing. You're writing JavaScript to interact with JavaScript. So it's powerful. And uh, a lot of people do optimize assets, fonts, 
fire off extra messages. So if you want to write your own plugin, where is the guide? And the guide is pretty good. I, I have to give you that. <laughs> but <laughs> the biggest mistake people would make is we'll start writing a plugin and we discover there is already a plugin doing this. <laughs> I've done this a couple of days ago with Cypress. I wrote a plugin and tried to publish it at 10 p.m. And I found, oh, wait, there is something with that name. Oh, wait, it does everything I'm doing and better. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, check the catalog first. Okay. Yeah. And definitely go check those docs. Like I, I, a huge shout out to the the docs team at Netlify. They're they're kind of the unsung heroes because you know you don't get credit when you write docs, but you definitely feel it when the docs are are done well and when they're done poorly. And I think that uh, our team has done such a killer job of trying to think through how you know how is this experience going to go for somebody on the first try. But Jason, um, can you can you repeat the same but seeing it when they'll be sung heroes? <laughs> I love it. I love it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you want to write your plugin, it's nothing but a collection of callbacks. And yes. they're all asynchronous. You can use modern syntax. And like those three stages, what I said, pre-build, post-build, on success. That's all you have to do. Export something that has on pre-build, on post-build. You get all those contestants, utils, and so on. Mm -hmm. And then you can write your own code there to do whatever you want. And in my case, for example, for Cypress on success that fires after successful deployment, you get the deploy prime URL mm -hmm. and you can run Cypress in my case, right? Get test results and then do whatever you want. And if you want inputs, you have to write manifest YAML file. Thankfully, YAML file, we just specify my plugin expects name by default. I mean, uh, name enabled by default is true. Uh, you can pass browser by default is Chromium, like all the parameters that the plugin wants to get from the user, from Netlify Tumble. Yeah. Um, here's a, a, a tip, right? If you want to optimize your Netlify build, you don't even have to write NPM package. You can write a local plugin because when you mm -hmm. say package, it can be a local path. Just like, you know, NPM require can load you know, local files you can load your own callbacks and those will execute during the build. Like this is the most powerful thing. If you want to start with optimizing your site, right, in your own way, maybe you want to fire off some analytics. Maybe you want to contact a database. Maybe you want to export some data right before you build. You write your own NPM script and you just say package local path and it works. So there's, <laughs> there's no barrier to entry. You don't yeah, have to register. You don't have to publish nothing. Just start writing it. Yeah. And it's it, another thing that's worth noting. And, and one of the things that kind of blew my mind with this is with most plugins, you're writing like a Babel plugin or a Webpack yeah. plugin, and that's operating on the source code of your yes. site. And so that means if you've got an organization that doesn't just write React or doesn't just write Vue, then you need a new Webpack or Babel plugin for each framework that you target. Right. The thing that's interesting about Netlify build plugins is they're operating on the compiled source. So mm -hmm. are the compiled code. So after you run your build system, the JavaScript that comes out, you can then run AST transformations against that. You can run AST transformations against the compiled markup that mm -hmm. comes out so that they can be generic. You can say, hey, go find all the image tags and use, uh, you know, get the abstract syntax tree take the source, and then I want you to turn that into a source set so that we get lazy loaded dynamic images and just replace those right in the output. So now I don't right. have to write React code. I just deal with what came out of the React code with the, the server-side render. Right, um, right. So there's some really, really powerful patterns here that, that can allow you to be framework agnostic, but still get those benefits uh, with a single plugin. So in my case, when, for example, I run command next uh, build, right, on next mm -hmm. generate, so when my e-commerce site gets built, I can convert, go inside the HTML that it produced and convert all those jacket images to like cat images. So yes. my users will buy cats and even though they think they're buying something else. <laughs> exactly okay. that. Yeah. <laughs> so just to go to the last slide before we go to questions and answers, deploy full previews, like stop, you know, risking it. You want to see the full site before you merge. Right, mm -hmm. every pull request should be working before you merge it. So Netlify is a perfect platform for that. I can vouch for it. You know, Jason can vouch for it probably. Oh, probably 50-50. <laughs> no, it's, it's a great platform. And make sure you test the site before yes. and after you deploy. All right. And I kind of explain why you want to do it after, 
because it's the full URL, right? All the things are as close to production as possible, but you also want to test it before just to make sure you're not deploying a broken side because then you'll have to roll back, you know, kind of do emergency stuff. You don't want to do that. So we wrote written a plugin to do that because Netlify build system is so powerful. Like it's lovely. Uh, Jason, quick question before we go to Q and A. What's in the future for Netlify build system? Um, right now, what we're working on is uh, we're coming up with better solutions for dynamic-ish content. Um, one of the challenges that you run into when you start going with decoupled and compiled UIs is that you start to see build times kind of move in uh, a linear yeah. correlation with the size of your site. And that can be really challenging when you've got a large site with tens or hundreds of thousands of sites or pages. Yeah. And one of the things that we're working on is, is figuring out how do we uh, keep all the benefits of these atomic deploys of making sure that you are getting these consistency guarantees and that you're using like the, the compiled UI for the best performance for the user while also eliminating some of that build time stuff. And uh, we've got some really, really exciting things coming up. Not quite ready to talk about them yet, but I promise it's going to be exciting. So look for look for us to start shouting about it all over the internet soon. That's, a, that's great. And that kind of transitions to our questions and answers very, very nicely because the top question is, right? Uh, can I, are there plans to allow for tests to run in parallel, right? Mm. This is a big one, right? Because right now, because we run the test as part of a build pipeline that runs on a single Netlify build machine, mm -hmm. the tests have to be running on that single machine sequentially. So we cannot run tests in parallel. Uh, so you kind of said that there are plans to maybe optimize, make build more powerful, maybe. Parallelization is something that we have experimented with and we got it running for, um, in the Gatsby build process, we have a solution for parallelized image processing because one uh -huh. of the biggest slowdowns for yeah. Gatsby is, is images. Um, the infrastructure that we put in place for that is scalable. Now, whether or not we're actually gonna ship that soon is a very different question, but it is something that we're talking about and something that is on our mind. Right. Um, so the answer is not yet, Hopefully soon. And I, I'm sure for some reason, I think it's easier to do kind of hybrid architecture where the build system, maybe pre-build, post-build test run on the same box, but after deploy, you can kick off multiple boxes that could run, for example, on success mm -hmm. tests in parallel, do things like that. But another observation is majority of performance issues, right? And performance work somehow is related to making Gatsby faster. So I don't know why. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we, we definitely have a lot of, um, th there are a lot of opportunities for, for performance improvements. And, you know, a lot of it does come down to, you know, there are frameworks that have, have classically struggled with performance. I think Gatsby is, is one of those. Um, and then there's also just the fact that, you know, if you've got a hundred thousand pages, it yeah. just takes a long time to build no matter what you've got. Um, yeah, we're not, we're not picking up a, a big thing there are image optimization. The images yeah. is a huge thing. It's yeah, absolutely. Any framework would struggle with images. Um, I want to quickly answer this one. In Netlify deploy log, I saw the newest version of Cypress. Is there a way to run tests with specific? Yes. Whatever version of Cypress you have in your package, Jason, that's what will be used because that's what will be installed. Mm. Right, but the plugin doesn't bring its own version of Cypress. It's whatever you specify that's what it will run with. Um, you, know, you you bring up something that I think is important because one of the things that is great about Netlify is that sometimes it seems like magic. Yeah. But the important thing to remember is that Netlify is all magic that you can understand because it's all exposed to you. You can see the the build yeah. plugin, even our build bot. The whole build system is open source. Yeah. So you can go see exactly what's happening during a build, but um, you know we use we use your package JSON, we use your Netlify.toml. There's there's no there's no black box here. It's right. all very much available to you as a developer. Most of it has strongly configured defaults, so that you usually don't need to know what's going on. But when you need to, you've got access. Exactly, exactly. Uh, why don't I answer? Uh... Ask this question, will Netlify offer the ability to define which context like preview, deploy or permanent branches different plugins operate on? 
right? And imagine you want to run some plugins just on production main branch and other plugins mm-hmm. on preview branch. So like maybe not do so much processing, right? Um, yeah. Right now, I don't think the build system allows you to do that. It So you can do it in the build plugin itself. You can right. do detection for, for yeah. deploy context. Um, you can also set up environment variables that you could check. It's not the most, to, to answer your yeah. question, we should make that better. It's possible today, but it requires a little bit of legwork. We can and should make that better. So I will, uh, that's, that's good feedback to take back to the team. Yes, and we have similar question from Jacob, pretty much the same. How do I run, for example, plugin on post build for some PRs, but on other steps, it's, it's the same. We can add this code to Cypress plugin and then inside yeah. the plugin, but it would be nice to have general system for you to configure it through Netlify TOML file for every Absolutely. plugin. Um, so we talked, uh, yeah, we just kind of, something sp- occurred to me as well. We talked about serverless functions, you know, static deploys, Oh, what about database support? What should people do when they deploy to Netlify regarding to da- databases? So databases can be whatever you want. The, the, the nice thing about the, the Jamstack architecture, that decoupled front end, is it means yeah. that your backends can be built however you want because you're going to talk to them through an API. Right. So if you want to stand up, um, uh, one that I really like as a front end developer is Hasura because Hasura yeah. does a lot of the, the configuration, the DBA stuff, that I get really nervous about. They set strong defaults and then I just get to define tables and then they give me an API to, to get that data in and out. Gotcha. Another so, one that's really good, like Firebase is really good, yeah. but you can set up MongoDB. Like we're, uh, I think I'm gonna be doing some stuff with MongoDB Atlas here in the future to, to show how that would work. You can set up your own SQL database or, you know, FaunaDB as yeah, is in the chat. That's another really good one. Yeah. So it's it, use any DB that exposes some kind of API. So but from your serverless mm-hmm. function, you hit it. You can also hit it from the front end as well, but it's less secure and probably more complicated. Yeah, I, I mean, if you're gonna hit it from your front end, make sure that you're doing it through an SDK. Like if you're right. using Firebase, they've got a great client side SDK, yeah. but follow their security best practices. I would never recommend hitting a, a like a database directly from a client. That's going to be a recipe for sadness. <laughs> no, no, but... you should do that. And you should concatenate all the strings when you form a SQL <laughs> query. That's, that's the best right, practice. Bobby tables. <laughs> <laughs> right. um, uh, something that I didn't kind of talk about. Netlify also offers Netlify identity for authenticating yes. users, right? Can you tell us a little bit? I have no idea how to test it, so I never looked at that, but can you just explain what Netlify Identity is? Yeah, so Netlify Identity is a, uh, it's a wrapper over the open source GoTrue library, which lets you authenticate users um, with a JSON web token. Um, the way that we use that inside of Netlify is it's a, it's a switch you can flip. We'll set up the identity database so that you can do all of the authentication, tracking people's usernames and passwords. When you are testing locally, you have access to the um, to the identity database. So in your serverless functions, you have the ability to uh, create and remove users. You, have, you get an admin token for doing identity requests. Um, so you can do that if you wanted to ch- test like user creation, user deletion. Um, and you can create a user uh, you can create a, a user for testing that could log in and attempt to access mm-hmm. uh, different areas. Because again, you're, you're just testing the deployed site. Like this is the power right. of Cypress. You're not, you're not trying to mock things. Right. You're literally creating a full running instance of the site that you can log in and then check that you have access to your user dashboard. And then it's showing your information and not somebody else's and all of those things. Well, you know, someone keeps uh sending me those jackets that they buy on my account. So I guess it's all secure and tested and everything works. <laughs> um, quick question. And I think we know the answer. Netlify, does Netlify work with private GitHub repos? Absolutely. We have support for self-hosted GitHub, self-hosted GitLab, um, private repos. Yeah, we're, we're fully enterprise ready. Perfect. Um, what about using Netlify and complementary CI? Should Netlify build replace your CI. What do you think, Jason? So what I've seen that works really well is Netlify is a, is a really powerful front end CI CD solution. Mm-hmm. Um, it works 
nicely in conjunction with like if you're if you're building a front end and your back end systems are built in house using Jenkins or Travis or Circle to to manage your back end build system mm -hmm. and then letting Netlify run the front end build and deploy it helps free up the DevOps engineer so they're not doing release yeah. management on the front end um, and it de-risks a lot of, of front end concerns so it works really well as a companion i've also seen teams that will have like a Jenkins run that they then deploy to Netlify using the Netlify CLI yes. uh, at the end of a Jenkins build. So you can incrementally adopt that way if you want, um, or if, if you decide that's the way you want to do it, you can like not use Netlify's build system at all and just deploy to Netlify right. as a target. Um, in my experience, using them together, like you could, you could absolutely use them together in a, you know, on like on success from Netlify, you could trigger a, a suite of different tests to run on Jenkins in parallel, or you could do that with GitHub actions or something. Mm -hmm. um, so there, there are definitely ways that it can work together. And, and there might be some really good reasons to do that. In terms of using it specifically for building front ends, I, you, you can, but I haven't seen a, a lot of use cases where it wasn't more complex than it needed yeah. to be. Yeah. I, I definitely use the Netlify CLI from my GitHub Actions, right? Like build everything and then deploy for front end using Netlify CLI. Like Jason said, it can do everything. So if you already have a complicated build system, just plug that in. That's the simplest mm -hmm. solution. Um, something that's... Uh, I. It's kind of a tough one. Like, how might one test Netlify function invocation with Cypress, right? Like, imagine if from the front end we click a button that fires Netlify function that contacts the database somewhere. What happens? Unfortunately, that's outside Cypress control, right? Mm -hmm. To Cypress, you're testing external site. That site fires, you know, contacts the database somewhere through invocation. Cypress has no boundary around the backend around that function, so it cannot control it. The only thing you can do is spy on the network request from the front mm -hmm. end to the Netlify function, and you can right. spy or stop it, but there is no way you can do after that because it can be running on completely different host and productions and so on. Webhooks are, are really challenging in that way. Yes. Um, the So typically what I do with webhooks is I, I do... Uh, a unit test. I just pass them a, a valid and invalid payload and make sure that they do what they're expected to do. Right. And then I just set up alerts if it fails through Stripe. Because you know, if, if Stripe's webhook doesn't go through, it it can alert you. You can have a Slack channel that'll be like, hey, your Stripe webhook failed. You better go right. look at that. All right. Um, the one thing that I want to mention, having good end-to-end -end tests doesn't replace crash reporting. So definitely use ray gun, sentry, whatever you know you want to set up because mm -hmm. you'll be surprised your end-to-end -end test could be running for hours and when first user comes in and discovers <laughs> something else or <laughs> types in something else and you're like oh that crashed it what i really like about um i like to think about it where you, you use cypress you use integration testing to test the happy path you make sure that people can get to where they're supposed to go that they see the right things but you're not trying to get full edge case coverage that just makes your test super slow right so yeah. you you know when you find a critical path that's that's not doing what you want add an integration test for yes that. but yeah. don't try to get like every single possible permutation of how somebody could use your website into integration testing because you're just going to wait seven hours and somebody's going to find a new edge case right right so maybe add uh end-to-end -end test as you discover kind of edge cases in data so right. maybe one more question before we go to the last slide because we are 58 minutes in um i think why not why don't we answer this one uh are the deploy previews viewable to robots or something else uh no by default they're not indexable um, right but you can have robots.txt if you add them yourself yep. right yeah you can you can drop in a robots.txt and we don't do anything to touch that excellent well uh i think we are out of time so i want to just finish with this slide i want to thank jason for being you know <laughs> such a great guest on this show and all the people watching thank you for attending the slides are public we'll send the recording and the slide link to everyone who has registered uh jason for, you know any last words thank you so much for having me this was a whole lot of fun i am really really excited to see what everybody builds now that they've seen what's possible here and if you want to send me 
uh, ideas, questions. If you want to show me what you're building, I'd love to see it. Uh, hit me up on Twitter. I'm there far more than I should be. Well, thank you, Jason. And thanks to everyone. Stay safe and happy testing.